Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. When the hay's been cut and rain might be coming, there's always a little pressure to hurry up and get the baling done. Even if you're using a Ferguson tractor and baler that were built a half century ago. Yeah, I like doing this. I'd like to bale a whole field for the guy. But he said he thought the hay was a little tough, so I see dust rolling out of it. it looks all right to me. They're forecasting rain for the night. If it's me, I'd bail. I'd be tickled to death to have somebody to bail it for me. Good advice from Richard Kimball, a guy who's been baling hay and farming the fields around West Central Ohio pretty much all his life. I grew up on Ferguson's. Uh, we had Ferguson's back in the 50s when I was a, a teenager. And uh, so that's why I kind of got into the Ferguson business. We always have had them. As far as the tractor itself, it's a Ferguson 40. They were made in 1956 and 57. And if you notice, it's a beige color. They were trying out different colors, trying to get people to buy more Ferguson's previous to this model. Why they most of them had been all gray, uh, gray like the Baylor, just gray. So they were trying some different colors to see if the public would buy them better. And what about you, Richard? Do you like the color of this 1956 Ferguson 40? Well, yes and no. It's it's different. Uh, one thing about it, uh, when you got this color, well, everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows it's a 40. A lot of people argue that they never made any of this color, but they did anyway. Uh, the tractor itself isn't so unique. There's plenty of them tractors around. The baler itself is what is unique here. It's side mounted, and uh, they made very few of them. Uh, I've heard stories of less than 2,000. Whether they even made that many or not, I don't know. This unusual side-mounted Ferguson baler built back in 1954 was said to be ahead of its time, but in fact is seldom seen today. I know of eight balers, including this one, in the United States. Uh, one guy got his baler out of Canada that I know of, and another fella got his cur out of Alaska. How a baler ever got to Alaska, I don't know. This baler is wide. Back in the 50s, why everybody had fences and gates. Most gates were 10 or 12 feet. Well, this baler and tractor together is better than 13 feet wide. To get it through a 10-foot gate is putting her impossible. Uh, therefore, it was very awkward, I would say, to handle. That's why I wouldn't say it was ahead of its time. I'd say it was behind time, really. In fact, this baler is rarely seen today, mainly because, back in the 1950s, Ferguson actually issued a full recall, and the company had almost all of these balers destroyed. I have talked to two different fellows that worked at uh, warehouses back in the 50s, and they talk about uh, the balers coming in, and they just literally took a torch and whacked them up in pieces. And they give the farmer a new baler. Then. That's the way they done that. If they recalled your baler and took it and torched it, they give you a new, what was called at that time, a Massey Ferguson number no. three pull-type baler would replace, replace this here tractor me. Why, why did they recall them? I don't know. Uh, my theory is they copied the knotters. And they're international knotters, and they are made in Canada. It says that right on them. Uh, but that's my theory on that they've done that. Uh, there's no really good explanation. Somehow this one survived the recall, and four decades later, Richard bought the baler at a sale in Northeast Ohio. He spent hours upon hours restoring it to like new working condition. The baler is driven by PTO from the tractor. Comes back this shaft here, goes across the belts inside this shield, and that shaft over there up to the gearbox in front. We'll raise up the shield here and look at the knotters. This is a chain that drives the knotters here. The knotters are what ties the knots in the bales. In between each bale, it makes this knot here. It ties the twine around the hay. That's what holds it together. Damn. Under this shield here is the plunger. The plunger is what packs the hay into the bale chamber. This mechanism goes around and around, and it, every time it comes forward, the rake arms pull the hay over. The plunger goes back, shoves the hay on back in, and packs it together. This Ferguson baler puts out square 50 to 55 pound bales. And when the hay gets a little too dry, well, the baler sometimes has to be tinkered with to keep working. Isn't that right, Richard? Your, your question is, how are you, are you having fun yet? That's what you should be asking me.
Is he having fun yet? Who wouldn't? With a growing tractor collection and a barn full of future projects to work on. Uh, these are just some of the tractors I've got uh, waiting to be restored. I've really got too many. Uh, Marilyn says I don't need this many, but anyway, I've got them. I don't know. I've got up probably 80, 85 tractors now. I don't keep track of them. And the fun of spending a summer day working with a sharp-looking 1956 Ferguson 40 tractor and a 1954 Ferguson Baylor that just missed going to the scrap pile. Makes me feel lucky, I guess, that I got one that didn't get torched. There's way I guess you'd look at that. I'm lucky enough to have one. 